YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with the preview and things to watch for the Indianapolis Colts. We are doing this for every NFL team. We have a playlist on the channel for the teams that we have done so far. Check it out. Make sure to comment which team I should do next. Yeah, going over what to watch, what we can expect, players to watch, games to watch, and some fans' takes, of course. For the Colts, realizing more and more, they, they kind of got a wide range of outcomes for this year. Like, they could... They got a lot. They're a pretty balanced team. Not too many holes, and they have a lot of solid players with a lot of upside. So if those guys develop and progress pretty quickly, they could be really sneaky good. Or could it be a little bit more of a process? Or you know, the situation with the quarterback position will de decide a lot. So um, yeah, it's an interesting team for this year. But top three things to watch, what to expect, maybe some things people aren't really talking about enough. Number three, I'm going to go with the defensive line, mainly the edge rushers, but the defensive line snaps and rotation looks like a pretty good defensive line, obviously, on paper, uh, and they played fairly well last year that they started off a little better than how they finished, but there, there's a good mixture of guys that can make immediate impact. Obviously, your DeForest Buckners and other players, but they also have guys that are good right now with some upside, but... Mainly what I'm looking for, again, is the, the different looks, the rotation, who gets majority of the snaps. And again, mainly, I, I almost put edge snaps in rotation because that's the main thing. But there's a reason I put D-line. We'll talk about that in a second. But their starters last year were Abukum uh, and Quiddy Pay, obviously. Samson Abukum and Quiddy Pay. Uh, you know, and now they add one of the best rookie edge rushers in Leatu Latu and uh, you know, who is a guy that was well known as a pro ready pass rusher, immediate impact, immediate production, like polished with all of his moves and, and he's pretty versatile as well. So it's like they had to have that guy pretty early in the first, you know, and it's a big time polished pass rusher. So it almost feels like he has to come in and start. Right. But they got pretty, two pretty decent pass rushers and you'd say pay probably has some upside. So who's, not going to start who's going to lose snaps over it that's a kind of a big question what we're curious about uh but i take it a step further and this ends up being pretty unique because i, I think people look at it like pay and abukum like they're both they're the two pass rushers like go you know from last year they're the same player they're not actually they're they're actually two different type of pass rushers where quitty pay is more your traditional defensive end and abukum is kind of specifically for gus bradley's defense where yeah, he can stand up, he can put his hand in the dirt, he can drop in coverage. He's a little bit more of the, you know, the athletic type back there, a guy that that is uh I guess versatile when it comes to 4-3 or 3-4 uh edge rusher, edge rusher in either scheme. So for for Gus Bradley's Leo defense that he's always ran. So he's a pretty important Samson Abukum. Like he's pretty important unique style role in that defense. So but Latu is very versatile. Like he played pretty much both those roles at UCLA. He actually even played inside some snaps. I like him. Everyone does more on the outside, but he's played that role where he's put his hand in the dirt and rushed, like, you know, being that physical defensive end. And he's had that role where he stood up and rushed from there or dropped in coverage. And he did pretty well in coverage as well, like reading the quarterback, getting his hands on the ball. So he can fill either role. So there could be games where they start with him in the pay roll and then Abukum's also starting or the opposite and then again why I added D line snaps and rotation and alignment different looks they can give is because again Latu actually had some snaps inside and he's very physical you know I, I, they're not he's probably going to play less inside than he did at UCLA but he can do it so think about those obvious passing downs uh were Maybe you rather have an extra pass rusher, you know, as good as Grover Stewart is, and he and he can be a factor on passing downs. But maybe there's reps where it's like super obvious third and long passing downs. You got Buckner and Lotu on the inside, you know, and Pay and Abukum on the outside. They could get pretty creative, actually. It's not going to be there's not going to be a ton of looks like that, but I'd watch out for some. But I like the different variety of looks. But I am curious who starts, who gets the most reps. It could go by game. I hope Latu gets gets some start, a good good amount of starter reps because he's a polished, ready to go right now. So very curious to see that. But uh, and then the factor in that they do have a really solid interior for most downs. Um, when we see Buckner and and Stewart out there, uh, and they have a you know some depth, young depth as well. So that should be a fun part in a. Something we can learn about with the Colts this year. Uh, number two, uh, full dose of Jonathan Taylor. Expect the full dose. Let's get excited about the full dose of Jonathan Taylor. I don't know if people talk about this enough, actually. I think people go, well, yeah, is their, their duo's not as good, right? It's true, I guess. It's true. They don't have Zach Moss anymore, but 
Jonathan Taylor is a lot better than Zach Moss. And, and, and they were a little hesitant to give Jonathan Taylor the full dose last year. And that was because, yeah, he was coming back. And then Zach Moss was already tearing it up. And it's like, man, do we do we take away s- this many snaps from Zach Moss? Because he's played so well. We got the star running back, but we don't want we kind of want to ease him into it. And there's times even later in the year, maybe the last play of the game for them on offense for the year. It's like, where the hell is Jonathan Taylor? So I really think they took that serious, like easing him back into it. because um, there was a whole situation in the offseason, so maybe he wasn't learning as much as you wanted him to, and uh, you know, and then just trying to get back, get healthy. You know, right now he's healthy, he's going in, he's learning everything, what what the plan is for this year under Steichen and fully healthy at this point that's and there's no Zach Moss so it's expect a full dose of Jonathan Taylor and he can very easily be the best running back in football when we got a full dose of Jonathan Taylor so and I I think the Steichen offense is built for Jonathan Taylor I think it's it's built for successful and explosive runs so I think it actually you, you first glance it's like 2023 Jonathan Taylor, Zach Moss, maybe Zach Moss's best season yet as an NFL player, and now it's just Jonathan Taylor. So if you look at it that way, it's like, all right, the Colts got worse at running back, and I understand it. Uh, you definitely can already make the case for the depth uh, they got worse, but I'd say not so fast in terms of just the runs you get per game. Think about the runs you get per game. You get a m- bigger increase in the guy that should be getting the ball in Jonathan Taylor, and even though Moss was great, he, there was games where like yeah like he helped them win like he won the game but he wanted to help them win games but it, it's if you think about it that way it's like all right that the star running back is getting the ball more so there's more star like plays or potential for those plays so you think at it that way which you should the running game actually could be better um scarier and Jonathan Taylor could end up being like a top three easily the best back in football this year so I'm really excited about that and that's kind of a, a reason it can make them deadly uh, you know, a, a tough team to deal with because you do have to really, really, really worry about the run. You factor in Richardson's run ability if he's healthy. You know, you have the game plan for so much there, uh, and, and they can, you know, win that way and control the clock and and make teams uh, make teams' jobs more difficult. Keep the offense on the sidelines. So I think it's just a perfect mesh with uh, Steichen's offense. So in a way, I think last year, like it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not a secret, actually. I was going to say, last year, it really wasn't the full Steichen offense, and it was what we saw was great, and it was tough for teams to game plan for, and I'm realizing more and more as I'm talking, because everyone knows that because Richardson was out, so it's not like the full plan, even though Minshew played well, and that was what he did, but I even think about Jonathan Taylor, like not like this, I think this year is where the, the mindset is, okay, now we go. We got our quarterback back, but we got our star running back, and, and he's full goal going into the year, um, you know, He's, he's part of the process heading into the year. So I think we're really going to see the full dose of not jo- just Jonathan Taylor. Well, because we see the full dose of Jonathan Taylor, it means we're seeing the full dose of the Colts offense. So if they get, think about it that way, uh, it sounds pr- pretty good. And then a worry for me, not, not a huge worry. It's not really a worry. It's probably not the right word. But for the Colts last year, I, I do think they won a lot of games uh, based off of teams kind of just not knowing what Steichen was going to throw at them and just – uh, maybe you know, earlier in the year, teams were preparing for Richardson and Minshew's out there, and uh, you know they don't know what to expect. Who the hell is getting the ball at running back? Teams that are in, you're just mainly a fresh. We see it all the time with the fresh new coach. There really isn't much of a game plan, so I do think they won a lot of games because of that. We see it at rookie coaches all the time. So, and then the sophomore year, like the next year, it's like all right, they kind of get there's more film. They get game plan for a little bit more properly. There actually is a game plan, so they don't really win games off of just purely the game plan, the the element of surprise, the mystery of aspect of it, the lack of film. You know, so that was part of me, and it still could be that way, uh, that they, they it could happen, I, I guess I could say, where they maybe take a step down because they don't win games off of strictly that. Teams have better game plan. But what I what I just said about Jonathan Taylor and, you know, obviously Richardson being back, like we didn't really get the full dose of not just Taylor but Steichen's, like what he actually wants to do with this offense yet. Uh, and he's such a good coach, I believe, uh, that 
I think it could continue to be fresh and it could continue to be a tougher, tougher game plan where it's not like completely figured out. So I'm more on the, the optimistic side of that, but it is something to watch. I've said it before. We saw it with several other teams. We see coaches win rookie of the year. And it's like, all right, he got figured out. He looks like a shit coach. Not going to happen with Steichen. He's never going to be. I don't I don't think he's going to be a shit coach, but ever. It doesn't seem that way, but I guess it's something to watch. But for all the things I explained, uh, I think it's a positive, optimistic sign that they can continue to be fresh, got to stay healthy, it's quarterback position mainly, and that's what we're about to talk about um, is Anthony Richardson. Richardson here. It's just a big, when you talk about Colts, you talk about Anthony Richardson is the biggest talking point. How would they be? And maybe not just him, but Steichen kind of gets factored in this, and maybe Joe Flacco gets factored in this. So, you know, the quarterback play, uh, well, we hope Flacco doesn't get uh, factored in this. We want AR5 to stay healthy as could be, but a lot of questions, and it's it's such an interesting, I don't put questions up here mainly. It's things that, I, like, there may be questions to other people, but I kind of have a take on it, but it's an interesting one because it's all people talk about right now, and then I, I think it, People seem to be split. Maybe let's not talk about Colts fans because they're going to be optimistic, as they should be, any fan base. Let's talk about like, just the whole world of football fans talking about the Colts, talking about Anthony Richardson. I think it's pretty damn split. I think it's – maybe I'm a little off, but maybe 50% Richardson is going to ball out. This guy is deadly. He's got the swagger. He's got the upside. He's got the cannon. He's got the legs, the build. Um, so much upside. So perfect for Steichen's offense. And a lot of those things are true. You know, but people believe and he's going to be great right now. That's what like 50% of the people say. And then the other 50% are like, I don't trust him to stay healthy. He's probably going to get injured at some point. He played in four games last year, injured multiple times, concussions, throwing shoulder, had surgery on a throwing shoulder. Uh, you know, he cannot play like that in the contact. Like, is it going to last? You know, uh, people are saying like they think that that 50 percent, they think he's going to get hurt. Maybe some they, sometimes they don't say it out loud because they don't really want to. Understandable, but that's kind of what they think. And I'm. I don't want to say either side's wrong, wrong, probably not the right word, uh, because like if he could end up getting injured, you know, hopefully not, obviously, and then those people are right, they're going to be like, see, I was right, like it could happen, or he could be, stay healthy, and he can be that deadly weapon, perfect for Steichen's offense, because he has all these different traits and tools, and uh, and, it, and he's got receivers, he's got weapons, he's got that running game to open things up, you got a game plan for Taylor, you got a game plan for AR, so it could work out, and those people look right, so I don't want to say, I don't want to say either side's wrong, but I think both sides, to, in my, this is my strictly my opinion, I, I don't love the way of looking at it for either side. I almost want a group of people to be down the middle a little bit because I think there's some people that are like, like it's almost like sure thing. He's going to be healthy and he's going to be great, right? And I, I think that's is that might be a little unfair. That's the way I look at it. Like if you expect this guy, he could be great because all the, like again, weapons and the tools he has and the, we, talk, we talked about it, but... It's like coming off an injury, multiple injuries. He was a raw prospect going into last year, and he didn't play a ton last year, uh, and he had the good flashes. Like he, he looked a little ahead of schedule for me. He still had a lot of misses. The completion percentage needs to come up. Um, you know, you could see the raw parts, like the footwork and all that. Um, you know, but I, I was impressed with a, a lot of throws uh, that he made. The Rams game stood out, and they lost that one in overtime. But to me, that's that stood out um, a lot. But uh, but yeah, he could be. But I, I think it's a little unfair to like put that on him right now. So those people are saying like, if he, let's say he's healthy all year and he's like a little, he looks raw, he's, he's like inconsistent. Like, are those people going to be like very disappointed in him? Like that to me, just think about the prospect because he's essentially a prospect still. So I don't think you can get on him like that if he, if he has some struggle here and there, or you know, or, or you know, if he's just a little inconsistent, like. So I, I, I don't like putting that much pressure on these types of quarterbacks. And the people that are like, it's a bad way of thinking of like, he's going to get hurt and he's going to struggle like because he's coming off that shoulder injury. I uh, maybe, maybe I just want to be a little optimistic. I, I think looking at him ne either, neither way it, I, to me is the way to go because um, like he's going to be, uh, he's going to have flash good moments like he did last year. He's going to continue to get better as long as he plays all year long. You, of course, you got to monitor the health, the durability, um, but yeah, it's a big question. Is he going to be healthy? Is he, you know, pro ready versus raw? And yeah, the way I look at it again, look at him like a prospect. I think it's the fair way of looking at it. Like he coming out of Florida, it's like, okay, this guy struggled at Florida for the most part. He had flashy moments. You can see the upside because the build, the traits, the tools, um, you, you know, the issues come from his base, his footwork and NFL coaches can fix that. Uh, you know, that's a fixable thing. If guys are just, you know, 
staring down receivers or hesitant throwing the ball or just looking to run only, uh, which, which believe it or not, it, you know, some people might program their brain that AR is that guy. He's not that, that guy where he just insists on running times it happens, but, um, yeah, but he was that that's the type of prospect he was. Like he's a raw, insanely high upside prospect. And he's essentially still that. He's not a rookie, but he's essentially still that. So I think that is the fair way of looking at it. So I think he's gonna be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I just hope he stays healthy. And then style, what's his style of play? But I think that goes into Steichen a little bit. Like you probably don't want him running into contact as much, right? Uh, you probably don't, even though he's built, he looks like he's built for it. And he is tough. He can run people over and he's physical. But, um, you know, so does it change? What does it change with his style, with Steichen's style? So these are a lot of, I mean, when it, when you think Colts and you think preview for this year, it's question marks with the quarterback position. But with, what's not a question mark is the talent deep inside in the tools in the upside with Richardson. That's why we all get excited. So uh, there are things to get excited about about this team. Um, but that's, again, like, like I said in the beginning of this video, like pretty wide range. It's like, like if some of these guys take a little bit more, you know, a little longer than we thought, or ARs injured, it's like okay, this team can end up being worse than last year, and maybe they got they get game plan for him a little more properly, or AR stays healthy and he's ahead of schedule. Because I I did think he, when he was healthy and playing, I thought he was a little bit ahead of schedule, a little bit. There was still the, there was still the raw, and that's okay. That's that that's perfectly normal, um, you know. But if if he's ahead of schedule, which is possible, and he's flashing those traits, those tools all day on on the on the field. And they have they're a pretty balanced, complete team, and they have other upside guys, other good players everywhere else. Like they could be scary good in a really good division. So fun team to watch for this year. Uh, I'm realizing more and more as I'm talking, like it's an interesting team. Players to watch. We're kind of going to talk about some of the players we just talked about uh, for this one, but not not Juju Brents. Actually, we didn't talk about the the secondary yet. And like I said, the, the roster's pretty complete. Uh, the, the the spot that people talk about the most when it comes to not being complete. Is uh is the secondary the secondary so somebody's got to step up and there are be better players than Juju Brents um second year player from Kansas State uh, on the and that secondary there's you know Kenny Moore there's players like that uh, but somebody's got to step up even further and I I'm a I was a fan of, of Brents coming out of Kansas State massive fan um, you know a guy you really want to work with with his length his athletic ability. Um, and he was pretty pol polished in terms of his coverage skills and his ball skills uh, at Kansas State. So and playing against some good comp, good receivers, high, high, you know, explosive offenses. So I have high hopes for him. You know, hopefully he plays a full season this year and he can really break out, step up. So that's a guy. I think he can do that. I think he will do that. But he's got to do it. It feels like someone's got to do it. So I'm watching out for him. Uh, and then number two, a guy we kind of touched on, and I'm going to kind of go over the same reasons. But the rookie, we put a rookie up here, lot too. Um, you know, I, I'm just the polished rookie that he is instant impact type of guy. And then will he stay healthy? Some teams scratch them off their board completely because they were a little worried about that. I, I'm going to be optimistic. I'm, I'd imagine he stays healthy right now. It's more the question for me, why maybe he was knocked down on my board a little bit from where his talent actually is, is because the long-term talent, like you draft the guy in the first round because he's going to be a big time player for a long, long time. So we can learn a little bit, a little bit about that this year. Mainly why he's on here is I think it can be that we kind of talked about it, not just the snaps and the rotation from the D line, but the different looks. I think you are able to give different looks because of this player, because of this player, because he can be the Abukum role. Like I explained in the beginning of this video, Abukum and Pay, they're 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 the starting edge rushers last year, opposite each other, but they're different, different roles. Uh, people, some most teams, most teams, it's like the same role. The two starting edge rushers, or maybe a chunk of teams, we'll say. But Latu, like he he can play either role, and he had some reps on the interior. He's polished getting after quarterback, polished dropping in coverage, uh, as polished against the run. Um, you know, so it's gonna. I I think he fits maybe more of that payroll a little bit more, but uh, it's gonna be fun. I think it creates more. It creates more variety for the Colts. So that's why he's a big big time player for this team. That's why he's listed on here. And then one, yes, it's kind of weird because we just kind of, obviously it's Anthony Richardson. Obviously, we just broke it down. What is he going to be? We know what he can become, but to become that, well, I should say I should start over. What is he going to be this year, like right away? That's the mystery. 
What's not a mystery. We know what he can be become, what he can become if he is healthy. If he keeps getting injured, he's never going to become that. So some big questions for this year, but this guy can be an a, a, a SOB to, to, to game plan for to deal with right away this year, or he, you know, he could, or he can have some of that, some growing pain. It's there are so many different scenarios with Anthony Richardson. It's going to decide a lot for this team. Um, then yeah, kind of going into Flacco, like. He led the Browns to playoffs last year. He's smart. He knows what he's doing. He can win some football games. I was a little surprised about that though, because do, is he like? Does he fit Steichen's offense? I, I think you take you take Steichen's playbook and you have to throw a little bit away, like out the window with Flacco. That's the only negative there. Like Minshew, you keep that stuff in there. You, maybe your play calling, play to play, is a little bit different, obviously, because Richardson's more athletic and a bigger body, but. Uh, that's the thing, but yeah, Flacco can win them games, but I think the bigger thing for him being there is the mentor, so I actually think if Richardson's out, maybe some people will go, well, he, Flacco led the Browns in the playoffs last year, um, you could definitely do it again, and I can't rule it out, but I don't think the same thing would play out, I think it's just like too, I think he's mainly there because yeah, the mentor he is, and if he has to jump in at any time, like he's a smart enough guy, like that's the reason he's there, but so Richardson's got to stay healthy, he'll decide a lot for this team. Games to watch, obviously the divisional games, but those are too obvious where I don't list them, but it's big for the Colts. Uh, they played the Texans really well last year. Richardson was giving them problems earlier in that game before getting injured. Uh, and they dominated the Texans the first game, and then they, they had a shot, came down to the last play in the second one. Uh, and then the, the Titan, Titans-Colts games end up being insane, I feel like, all the time. The last how many years, they end up being wildly entertaining, a battle, um, and, you know, uh, more so the Texans Titans games it feels like than the Jags games, but that division's tough, really, really good. Like somebody good's gonna finish last in that division. So obviously those ones. I put the Vikings on here. My voice just got really high for a second there. I put the Vikings uh, on there, my team, um, in Week Nine in Minnesota, and I where people rank all the teams in the NFL. I feel like they put the Colts and the Vikings somewhat in the same range. Probably the Colts a little better ranked because Vikings quarterback situation, but they both have like the questions are at the quarterback. Both teams. Uh, and the Colts going to be mainly a dominant running team. The Vikings stopped the run pretty well last year. Good battle. I, I think it's actually a true test for the Colts. You think the Vikings, like, uh, they're not going to be that great this year probably, you know, even though they have some good players. But I think it's a good test because, I, I, again, the Vikings stopped the run pretty well. But the main thing, the Colts, like, one weakness is secondary. And the Vikings have the weapons. They have the receivers. They have, you know, even Hawkins in the tight end. You know, so it's a. I actually think it's a challenge, and you got young quarterbacks colliding here in this one. If it's McCarthy and Richardson, um, so I actually think that's a fun matchup and a revenge for the Colts from the the whole game two years ago. I almost said last year, two years ago. Um, there, Bills, tough matchup. Let's see what the Week Ten. Here we go, clicking in the gear. Um, let's see what the Colts are made of here, playing a tough team, but. Josh Allen, Anthony Richardson, like similar play styles. They were both super raw prospects coming out with the big builds, the height, the weight, like the physicality. They both can run people over, but they want to be that throw first. They can air it downfield. They can make those tough NFL throws. It That's going to be fun. I think if, as long as they're both out there, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, both pretty balanced teams. Obviously, the Bills are better, but that's going to be good. I like the Patriots, and you think the Colts are definitely better than the Patriots, but at, at New England in Week 13, well, first off, it feels like the Colts, the Patriots games are always interesting. I don't know. They're always pretty good. I think going back to Peyton Manning versus Tom Brady, last year they had a battle, defense of defensive battle that could have went either way in the Colts defense. I know it's the Patriots, but Colts defense, I was like, like they played out of their minds in that game, like top to bottom. Um, you know, so the, and it's a defensive battle here, but maybe, Hey, this time around, we got the young high upside quarterbacks playing against each other with Richardson and may, like these are insanely high upside guys. And here we are in week 13 where maybe they're progressing a little bit. Um, also kind of a good idea to see where the Colts are at this year. Like last year, this was a defensive game and their defense was lights out. They could not get offense going. It, it was kind of like a weakness playing against that and new coach, but the, he was on, you know, Mayo was on the staff. It's the same. They're going to run things the same way. So maybe there was some sort of like, that's their, their weakness, that type of defense. So I think a true test, I think I kind of like, uh, even though it's the Patriots, it kind of like, uh, let's see where we're at. Let's see where we're power progressing type game. Um, so that's, you know, I kind of find games for like their hidden, hidden meanings in the game, hidden messages in the games. Um, so I like those ones. Those ones stand out. And then we'll take a look at some fans takes here that we always do. Um, there's a group of our Twitter slash X subscribers. 
that have some takes. Anthony Kramer. Anthony Kramer and Cameron Sullivan always have some, so I appreciate those guys, longtime followers. Um, yeah, AR consistency, health, preparation. Yeah, it's a good point. Like, how do you prepare for the games? Like, we he, he had shoulder soreness kind of pop up recently. I'd imagine that goes away with time. Um, you know, but how, how do they go about it? What's the game plan? Do you try to, you know, game plan for having them let, run less or get the ball out a little quicker? So it's a good point. Slot receiver. Yeah, we didn't talk about the receivers enough. So that's just a good part about the, the fans here um, because that we talked about the edge rotation. How about the receiver rotation? Uh, because they got a good Michael Pittman's a stud. We know that. Josh Downs, huge fan of Josh Downs. Was high on him in a North Carolina, really good slot receiver. Uh, then A.D. Mitchell is the guy that plays on the outside as well. Uh, and then they have Alec Pierce, who's been a little, like, one second, you're like, okay, he might be something. And one second, it's like, ah, he's disappointing. You know, so um, how does that rotation work? Mitchell, uh, some people worry about because he's diabetic. I didn't really worry about that. And some people, like, worry about the effort. He kind of gives limited effort. So that's something to watch as well. But how that – yeah, it wasn't one of my main three. It's a good point. It is. We got to talk about it. But it wasn't one of my main three points because – I don't think it's like that much of a, no matter how they do things, I don't really think it's that much of like a worry or not worry, but uh, it's that much of a different, like Pittman and Pittman's going to be out there. Downs is going to man that he's going to play the slot a lot. Um, Mitchell could line up in the slot if you need him to, but yeah, Mitchell and Pierce are going to get some outside reps. You're going to get some good play out there no matter what. So I, I don't know if it was that much of a question, but it is a good talking point. Um, yeah, could Downs? Yeah, just being used more. I thought you know, a little. Uh, he started off super hot, you know, and then was still a factor, but cooled down a little bit. So how the you know the usage there, uh, and then rotation off the edge to your secondary. Yeah, so we touched on that those things a little bit. Uh, Cam Sullivan talking about Jonathan Taylor's production. Can he return to two years? I think definitely think he could. We talked about that a lot. Like full dose. Hopefully, 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 maybe Steichen's one of those guys that just needs to get other guys carries. We'll see, but. Lot to health, immediate impact, edge rotation. Yeah, some of the things we touched on as well. It's just a really good question. Like what, what, what we're gonna, what we're waiting for, to waiting to learn. Um, will AR's play style be forced to change? Did, yeah, that we touched on it a little bit. It's it's really good point. Like, does he? Yeah, it's a really good question. Does Steichen go in and like change the play calls, or tell him, is he telling him to run less? And AR like up here, is he? tweaking things a little bit because you don't you know so or is it just full go go at it um you know let's just like, maybe they think last year's injuries were flukes let's just go let's go back at it we, it's your game let's you know so it's, it's a little tricky call there so it's a big thing and then take from cam cameron sullivan adding a take here Kil colts finish the year strong but come in last in a tough division yeah it's it's possible like somebody's going to come in last in that division. Like if the Jags continue to where they left off, I'd say it's them, but I really don't think they're going to get I just really don't think they're going to continue where they left off, but they could, you know, losing the Titans at the end and they were beat up. Uh, I think most people have the Titans at the end, but I think the Titans are one of the sneakiest teams, almost underrated teams just because, because of game plan factor. I like maybe the teams are going to catch on as the year goes on, but it's like, uh, you know, the, how are we going to game plan for this? We really don't have an idea. Like, Levis can air it out. He has weapons all over the place now, unlike before. It's just not that same old-school Titans offense. And they got a two-headed monster at running back. They can run the ball. The offense line is what can kill them. And their defense should be well-coached with Denar Wilson, and they have players, you know, so they, uh, they're they going to be tough to game plan for. So I think they're going to be better. than They can finish last. They can, they can be way better. I think they're going to be way better than people think, but they can still finish last. The Colts, it's going to depend on – quarterback health and uh progression I, I can't imagine the texans finishing last uh but yeah it's going to be an interesting division for sure and then gavin mallard uh ar's injury concern goes beyond the shoulder two concussions how does he prevent injury in year two so it's a good point we kind of touched on it a little bit but he brings up it, it's a good point like he bring like people just talk about the main thing like he had he he had surgery and was injured on his main throwing shoulders like and it sounds like he's doing good um, he had some shoulder soreness, but they said he would play that weekend if there was a game, and it's way before there's a game. So that, to me, that's a good sign. There's going to be some soreness, uh, but but it's serious. So people do talk about that for a reason, but you kind of forget that he had the concu you know concussions and things pop up in the other games too. So that it's a it's yeah, it's it's tough. So how, you know, will he stay healthy? It's a big question. Front seven should be good. However, does the secondary hold them back? Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, do does the ball come out so damn quick that it doesn't even matter with the defensive line. I've seen that. I've seen that a ton of times. 
Um, my my Vikings two years ago when they made the playoffs, like the D line was good, but you don't even notice it because they they got teams were receivers were open instantly, like quick slant, quick slant. That's all teams had to do. Like guys are playing off because they're not good enough to press, and the Colts are better than that. But and it's like you know. So it, my point is the D line was not even a factor because how ball how fast the ball is coming out, like how quick. I can't talk. How quick the ball is coming out, you know? So, um, I don't think it'd be that bad. You know, they got good players there, but it's a question. Uh, then some other uh, followers on Twitter, uh, Claymore rosters better than people think great playmakers on offense. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a pretty complete offense besides the secondary or defense. Uh, it's a completely, pretty complete team besides or roster besides the secondary, um, pretty complete so that's good but they have playmakers too like they have not only are they com- pretty pretty complete they have playmakers everywhere so especially on offense so like that that means something that can that creates a kind of a good team there just alone um you know so good point there good old line good d line a lot of depth potential top five both units yeah i think some people are a little high on uh, top five would be a little high but i think that it, they're both good both good they're well coached for sure um then yeah, right away if you say that about a team, good old line, good D line, that's it means something. Uh, and then talking about lack of depth, not really worried too much about it at linebacker. Um, but yeah, there, there is some little bit of lack of depth there. Offense looked a lot better on air last season despite many mistakes. Yeah, just there's more to it, you know. So excited to see that offense. He's talking about the you know uh, math man talking about the, how complete it is and realizing that a little bit more and more. Um, you just talk about the depth as well. Um, I'll tell you what the D line is safety. Yeah, safety a big question. On Blackman, I think it's a little underrated. Somebody else gonna have to step up. Uh, I, I would think they got guys like they got names like that have played or has have upside like Nick Cross as he step up. Um, you know, so somebody got to step up there as well. And then a bold take that I think is one of those realistic bold takes if you really think about it. And Jelani Woods, Stan uh, at Colts fan, uh, AR and JT combined for two thousand plus rushing yards. Well, first. Richardson needs to stay healthy, but JT I think is going to run for a lot more this year than he did last year. Um, so could I mean, 1500? Nobody got 1500 last year. I think McCaffrey was just under that. So that's an insane amount. I can't put it past him. But what what if he gets kind of close to that? Definitely realistic. And then the rest, you know, 600, 700 rushing yards from AR. Um, Got to stay healthy, and they have to kind of let him do his play style there. But it's like an inter- it's an interesting bold prediction that's like not like too out there. I think most people say no, just because some things need to happen. But um, it's an interesting one there. But that will wrap it up for the Colts video. I, I think a pretty intriguing team. Uh, the the more and more you think about it there, so a team to watch. Like I'm just curious about. I'm curious about not just Richson. Yeah, we get the full dose of one of the best running backs in football, the receiver rotation, the edge rotation, the different looks at, at you know in terms of the edge. Uh, the game plan was a big factor in their favor last year. How does it go this year? Do they win games off that? Like a lot of questions, a lot of things to watch. I'm excited. I'm excited about that division, the AFC South. Really excited about that division. A lot of upside. Like, a lot of teams of the future there, it feels like. So that'll do it. More of these to come. Playlists on the channel. Join us on Twitter. Check out our sponsor, Liquid IV. Code GOAT for 20% off. Uh, Really good stuff. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.